Hi, I'm Tom Vasich, and this is the UCI podcast video series. Joining me is Dr. Ed Manuki, Professor and Chair of Pathology with UCI Health. When doctors suspected a man hospitalized at the UCI Medical Center in early March might have COVID-19, the only option for a test at that time was through Orange County's Public Health Agency, which was already swamped. And results took seven to 10 days. That left UCI health doctors, nurses, staff, and other patients in the dark, just as the novel coronavirus crisis was hitting California. A team of UCI health physicians and scientists led by Dr. Manuki rapidly responded, and the UCI Medical Center became the first hospital in Orange County to provide in-house COVID-19 testing on March 19th, just shy of two weeks after the quest began and more than two weeks ahead of the estimated launch date. And best of all, results came as quickly as in one day. Dr. Manuki is here to tell us how all this was accomplished. Thank you for joining the UCI podcast. My pleasure, Tom. It's amazing that you and your colleagues could respond so quickly to fill the need for a COVID-19 test. How was this all accomplished? Right. Well, it really took a village, um, and we very quickly needed to come up with a plan, um, both immediate, uh, near-term, and long-term plans to provide COVID-19 testing. Uh, The first option was to look at who already had testing up that we could send uh, samples for our patients right away. And as you mentioned, um, the options were really pretty limited um, and they were swamped and those results were taking a little bit too long for our patients. So we looked initially at the companies uh, we work with closely to see who was coming up with a test. Um, And for that immediate plan, uh, the one that we liked the best and thought would be a good test Uh, required us to purchase a new instrument. So thanks to the very nimble and decisive leadership of UCI Health, uh, we got that approved. Uh, We were able, with our very tireless and amazing microbiology team, to be able to validate the test on that instrument and be able to go live with that on March 19th. And at the same time, we had, we're validating a second instrument, and I think, I believe on March 23rd, so about four days later, we were up and running on the second testing platform. And so that really gave us a, a lot more security to at least be able to meet the initial need uh, for our patients. It must help having a medical school full of world-class scientists to work with. It, indeed, it does. Um, and I, I would say as our CEO, Chad uh, Lefteris, has said, uh, we were sort of made for this as an academic medical center. And, and there are you know, many, many different ways the research community contributed, but three that came to mind. Uh, one, uh, of course, was simply the donations of things that we had shortages in, uh, the personal protective equipment, or PPE. Uh, the donations from the research campus were, were pouring in, um, and we were, of course, very grateful. Uh, The second way was we mobilized a group of volunteers on the research campus, mostly graduate students and and postdocs, um, in case we needed them for all sorts of things. But in the immediate term, what they were extremely helpful for was to do searches of the literature and the web. Uh, And that informed our prioritization for testing, which patients should get tested, uh, as well as what are the other lab tests that we should order on the patients um, to, to try to predict which ones we're going to really need uh, an ICU bed and possibly a ventilator. So that was extremely helpful. And then the third way was manufacturing uh, some of the things that we had shortages of. Um, 3D printed face shields, uh, looking into 3D printed swabs for collecting the specimens for the test uh, and producing the transport fluid that those swabs go into. Um, And so that's just a few of the different ways a research campus mobilized, in addition to facilitating the great research, both clinical research and basic research um, that the campus is already doing. So where is UCI right now in the process of testing? So for the testing that we've been talking about, which is uh, known as a PCR testing or molecular testing, we're able to do about up to about a thousand tests per day. Um, uh, we were also the first Orange County hospital to come up with antibody testing. Uh, and for that, uh, we're able to provide uh, 300 or so tests per day. Uh, and on both of those, we're, we're growing. 
I would say that that is enough for us, especially for the PCR testing, to be able to test all of the patients that uh, allow us to reopen the hospital to take care of the patients who've been delaying their care uh, because of COVID-19, um, and to begin helping to test some of our uh, affiliates uh, and community partners uh, who uh, need some assistance getting um, their patients tested. So anyone who wants a test can get one? You know, increasingly that is the case. I think because of the shortages, and, and not just the shortages of the tests, but really the shortages of, of the, the PPE to be able to take the tests, the swabs, um, and just having to, to get uh, you know, all of our ducks in a row to be able to accept the test, we were initially focusing on patients who had symptoms. But now, increasingly, because we really uh, have much more capacity to do testing, uh, we are uh, broadening that uh, to uh, in many different ways uh, to include, you know, high-risk um, asymptomatic people, and again, more and more of our community partners, um, skilled nursing facilities um, that need our help. What are you learning about the coronavirus and COVID-19 from these test results? Well, we're we're learning a lot very quickly. Um, it is a, a new virus. So there is much to learn, and there's much to learn about the tests as well. I think, understandably, the FDA uh, was allowing these tests uh, and approving uh, these tests, but doing so in a very rapid fashion to try to meet the need to get up testing as quickly as possible. Um, so we're also learning about the tests, um, you know, which tests are, are good tests and which ones are not so good. I've heard you say that not everyone needs a COVID-19 test. Who does? That's right. And uh, I, I think this is also will be a moving target or an evolving target, depending on what the needs of, of our society and community are. Currently, um, uh, people who have symptoms uh, that could be COVID-19 clearly should get a test uh, because they're the ones we need to know if it is COVID-19 whether they need to isolate or quarantine themselves, be extra careful with their hand hygiene and masking so they don't spread it to others, uh, and so we can contain uh, the COVID-19 outbreaks. Um, more and more, we want to also increase that, uh, in part because we know that people will feel safer if they can get more, more testing. Uh, and so as uh, we're able and others are able to provide more testing. I think um, extending that so that other people uh, who can get tested uh, and should get tested, we can expand uh, to those uh, folks as well. Will wide scale testing be needed in order for people to return to the workplace or to the classroom? So that's a great question. I, I think um, there are different approaches um, and there are different approaches that require less testing for that to be achieved and others that I think require more testing. Um, I think the approach that we're taking, and again, taking advantage of being an academic uh, medical center, um, is we can take a very rational, uh, evidence-based approach to, uh, to uh, the testing uh, and to the reopening of the campus. And I, and I um, am very appreciative of the campus and uh, the Irvine and, Orange County communities in general, really taking a, a thoughtful approach about how this should be done. But in general, yes, I think we, we do need to do more testing uh, to be able to reopen our society, our, our schools, um, and, and ourselves. UCI Health is also doing antibody testing. What is that useful for? So the antibody testing, um, maybe I should start by saying what it's not useful for, is it, it is not useful for letting a patient know that they have an active infection um, and that they could then spread it. And then they need to be careful uh, and, and be aware of their own body to see if they might need hospitalization, for example. What the antibody test does is it tells uh, a person uh, that they had COVID disease um, uh, in the past. And that's important for a few different reasons. For one, obviously, we're all many patients who thought they might have had COVID-19 but couldn't get the PCR test at the time. They're curious and just want to know. Um, and I think that's important. The antibody test is very, very important, secondly, for us to understand how widespread COVID-19 was in our community. 
we can get better estimates of what the true infection rate is and the death rate uh, for the diseases. And um, third, um, among others, is um, that there is a way that patients who had COVID-19 can actually give back to another patient who is now sick with COVID-19. And the antibody test potentially identifies donors uh, for what's called convalescent plasma. And that convalescent plasma can be donated to treat a patient who has COVID-19 to either prevent or lessen the severity of the disease. So it's a very sort of generous uh, opportunity that relates to the antibody test. And UCI is doing research on covalescent plasma. Exactly. We are uh, one of the initial sites on a national study to be doing a clinical trial on convalescent plasma, as we were for the now FDA-approved uh, drug, uh, remdesivir. Um, so uh, again, uh, we're fortunate to be in uh, such a dynamic and active uh, academic uh, health system. Thank you, Dr. Manuki. And thank you for listening to the UCI podcast, which is a production of UCI Strategic Communications and Public Affairs. For more about all things COVID-19, go to oc-covid19.org.